Here we go. We're going to start our recording. And I want to welcome Brittany Giraldi. And Brittany runs a plant-based cooking YouTube channel named The Giraldi Family. She has developed hundreds of delicious, easy, and family-friendly recipes. And um, uh, um, family-friendly recipes focused on whole plant-based. Um, I'm sorry, I was admitting somebody else in here. Um, based on a whole food plant-based lifestyle. She has a master's in education, um, in education and a certificate in a plant-based nutrition from T. Colin Campbell Center for Nutrition Studies. She is currently um, a co-leader of the Pittsburgh Plant-Based um, Support Group in partnership with Plant Pure Communities, offering free nu nu nutrition education classes and cooking um, courses. So um, this, of course, is a hot topic for you know anybody um, in general, but for all of you that are battling and, and dealing with cancer issues, um, I think it's um, people always have a million questions. So we're really um, privileged and, and uh, glad that we're, we have her with us tonight. So welcome, Brittany. I'm going to make you our spotlight lady here and see if we can see it. All right. Welcome. Go ahead. Thank you guys so much for having me. Um, I'm just going to tell you guys a little bit about my background and we'll talk about plant-based nutrition and then I have a whole bunch of recipes to send to you guys. Um, so I'm going to make one of the recipes tonight, really easy dinner bowls just to toss together. You can make it several different ways. I'm going to show you a really easy sauce to make with it. And then um, Wendy will send out, I'm sure the recording of this along with those recipes. So you don't have to take notes or anything. I always do like a little bit laid back in formal classes. If you have any questions for me, I can see the chat too. Um, I'm welcome to answer anything that I can. Um, so my name is uh, Brittany Giroudi and uh, currently I am 30 years old. I live in Pittsburgh in the Plum area. And my plant-based journey started um, almost five years ago. So um, around the age of 24, 25, um, I recently got married. We bought our first home. I finished my master's degree, got my first teaching job, and um, started to notice some, some health crisis happening. Um, I was overweight, um, but the weight kind of kept coming on. Um, I'm also very short. I'm only 4'11 uh, in person. So you know, when I tell you guys my weight, you can imagine that on somebody who's under five feet uh, tall. Um, but I was, uh, you know, a little overweight and it kind of started to pile up. Um, I started having blood pressure issues. I was actually on two different blood pressure medicines at the age of 25. And um, luckily my husband, when he got his job, they offered this really awesome blood work for our help for our insurance, you got a discount if your spouse did it as well. So I did it. And the blood work came back awful. And I kind of joke about this now is that this is really my aha moment and kind of my eye opening moment to do something about it. Um, my C reactive protein, which level it measures the level of inflammation in your body, was a 16. Under three is normal. So that was a huge like red flag. I was Googling. What does this mean? You know, how can I fix it? What what's going on? Um, I had cholesterol. My total was 242, so that was high, border high, but high. Um, I again had high blood pressure issues at the time and was taking medicine for that. And I already started to have a little bit of chest pain. Like forget going walking up hills, all of that. Um, and then my weight got up to. It probably was higher than this. I stopped looking at the, at the scale, but it was at 180, uh, I kind of say around, around 180. Um, and again, being so short. So I knew I had to do something. I had a family history of heart disease. I watched an uncle pass, you know, when he was 50 from, from heart disease. My own father had um, stents and defibrillators and um, he had a triple bypass when I was in elementary school. So I was very concerned about heart disease. And at the same time, my mom was battling cancer. Um, and so, you know, we had breast cancer in our family and um, I just knew that I needed to do something to get healthier. So luckily uh, the night before Easter, I was surfing Netflix 
Um, and I came across this documentary called Forks Over Knives. And in Forks Over Knives, they have a uh, they have they have two doctors mainly, Dr. Esselstyn, who um, wrote the book Prevent and Reverse Heart Disease, and they have T. Colin Campbell, who's a scientist who wrote the China study, which I saw somebody Martin in the chat put uh, about his book, the China study, and they talk about how plant based diet can reduce your risk for getting cancer and can reduce your risk for heart disease, and then was even the more aha moment for me was that I watched the producer of the show who was much older than I was, um, probably double my age, um, you know, get his test taken. He had a C-reactive protein test that was like, not, mine was way higher than his. Um, he had high blood pressure, high cholesterol, you name it, he had it. So I watched him go from before and after he ended up having beautiful numbers after adopting a plant-based diet. And I thought like, well, if he can do it, I can do it. Okay. So I show up to Easter the next day at my family's and I'm like, well, I can not eat this now. Not sure what I can eat, but I can't eat, you know, ham or any of this stuff that you guys are serving. Um, so it was a really kind of funny way to kind of jump into it, but very memorable for me. Um, I've been doing this ever since that night. And I like to say that um, that was the best decision I've ever made. It has completely changed everything for me. I was able to get off my two blood pressure medications. I have beautiful blood pressure now. Uh, my cholesterol is 150, went from 242 to 150. My C-reactive protein level went from 16 down to under one. Um, and so it really just... It really just changed my life completely. And then also I've you know, lost 80 pounds since then. Um, and now, you know, walking up hills, I we go on vacation and go climb mountains and I'm very active and really love that stuff. And not only did my blood work just get beautiful, but I just feel so much better. So my journey to being plant-based really was all for health. I, again, I want to age as, you know, as wonderfully as possible and do everything I want to do. And I want to avoid any diseases I can possible and give my body the best chance, you know, to possibly do that. So that's my little background on how I got started. Um, and it, it has been such an amazing journey. And I think people are um, not sure what to eat. They're unsure of, you um, how to create foods that they used to really love and make it plant-based and dairy-free and all these things. They, you think that you can't have a lot of things when you go plant-based. And that's why I kind of started my channel. One was because I came from a family that was very sick and I wanted to help other people's families get healthy. And the other reason was, is that I love plant-based cooking and you can still make all of your comfort foods that you really like plant-based and healthy. So I kind of recreate a lot of dishes like macaroni and cheese casseroles and um, enchiladas and lasagnas and all of these different things that you maybe would think that, you know, how am I going to do this about dairy and, and, and what am I going to do for my protein and different things like that and still have that comfort level that you really enjoy. So that's kind of how I got started with starting a YouTube channel. I never thought, you know, I would be making videos, but people really enjoy it. And I'm happy to help anyone on their plant-based journey. Um, we also have a free Facebook group where we have like 9,000 people currently in it all around the world. And everyone that's just starting to be plant-based, maybe they're interested in like changing up one or two meals to fully jumping in on it. Hold on, I have dogs too. They're, my dog's trying to, trying to go outside. Give me one second, guys. Um, before I jump into today's recipe, does anyone have any questions on um, anything I mentioned? If you're interested in the free Facebook group or if you want like extra help on being plant-based, it's just the Drudy family. And there's a private group and people ask all sorts of questions too um, after this presentation if you are interested. And then our YouTube channel is just the Drudy family too. And I also have a website with lots of recipes um, as well. So plant-based uh, plant based nutrition, I really like to break it down into a couple of different categories. Um, a lot of the times people will ask me, well, how do I get certain um, vitamins or protein or making sure you get enough? 
And I very much suggest that everyone checks out the China study by T. Colin Campbell. He actually talks about how our society is kind of over protein on overdrive, how we're kind of getting in way too much protein and it's concentrated. And um, I know for my height and size around 46 to 52 grams of protein is perfect. And I'm generally getting like closer to 80 a day eating plant-based. So it's very easy and possible to do. And there's a couple different sources you can, you can have. Um, beans are a fantastic source of protein. I highly suggest, even if you didn't like beans, there are so many different kinds out there now that you can change up and try new ones. Um, it's really endless of the varieties. Uh, there is nuts and seeds. There is um, soy products as well. And when I talk about soy, um, usually people get a little nervous about cancer and phytoestrogens and can I have soy? And um, there is a ton of research out there and I can give you sources if you guys wanna check this out and T. Colin Campbell's book kind of talks about this too. Um, you know, it's, it's the whole food. We're talking about um, edamame. We're talking about tempeh. We're talking about tofu. You know, not talking about soy isolate fake chicken that you get from uh, Gardein or like when you go to the grocery store in the freezer section, the whole, the whole food. And really that's what this whole lifestyle is about, eating things that aren't so much, you know, packaged, but in whole, whole form. Um, so I do eat, you know, tofu and tempeh and, and um, have soy milk and those kind of items in my life, especially because I'm trying to avoid breast cancer. Um, and so I think people instantly think like having soy can cause breast cancer, but really it's the opposite when you go and look at the actual studies that, you know, they've had studies of women in Japan that ate the most soy, had the least amounts of breast cancer. So uh, it's a little controversial. I'm, I know people are kind of stuck in their ways if you've um, heard people talk about soy or, or not, but really the whole soy. And uh, there's lots of research on that. You can also check out a book by um, Dr. Christy Funk. She has a book called The, the Breast, The Owner's Manual. She's an oncologist and she writes about um, preventing, preventing breast cancer. Um, so as somebody who has had a mother who had breast cancer and my mom was adopted, I'm not really sure of her family history. I, I do try to eat soy often to lower my risks for that. Um, so I'm going to kind of move in since we don't seem to have any questions yet into dinner tonight. And again, the recipes that I made for this group are very easy things that you could just like pull out from your refrigerator or make, um, really easy to assemble. I'm super busy. So I love to cook, but I also love convenience during the week. I work and do the cooking classes and, um, you know, need something quick. So these are really what my go-to. Uh, I really like comfort foods. So in your recipes that you'll get, it'll be, um, there's, a, there's a Mexican taco bowl. There's a shepherd's pie with a gravy that you can make. So really awesome kind of, especially the shepherd's pie this time of year. I find that more people eat that uh, around March and different things. Um, tonight we're gonna make our Asian bowl, which is kind of a teriyaki bowl. Um, and so those are kind of the three things that I kind of love to do that are just easy and simple. So for this recipe, I like to kind of do a clean out of our refrigerator. I go and find whatever vegetables I have. So you'll see vegetables on here that I recommend, but you know, in here I have, um, I, like I didn't have a cucumber, so I don't have a cucumber. And I'm gonna use a red bell pepper instead of an onion. So really it doesn't really matter, you know, just pull out a couple different varieties of vegetables for this. And the other thing too with, you know, eating for health is eating things in multiple colors, right? So we want, we want the kind of the rainbow when we eat. So we have orange carrots, we have green broccoli, green bo baby bok choy, green spinach. I have a red bell pepper. Um, eating things that really have variety in colors. You get other colors of peppers or, or even a variety of different colored carrots. It really is an awesome way to go about it. So I usually will do this on the skillet. I'll just and again, it's just cleaning out whatever you have. Um, I've done this with shaved Brussels sprouts or cabbage. I'm using baby bok choy because it's my favorite. If you guys are in Pittsburgh, um, the East End Food Co-op in Wilkinsburg is my favorite place to shop. They have a variety of different produce. It's kind of, I kind of, now that I've been plant-based for a long time, it's kind of like um, the candy shop for me. I'm always like, oh, what kind of 
new things do I get to try out variety wise? So, um, you know, sometimes I do Napa cabbage, whatever you like. So I just kind of loosely chop up. I'm gonna throw this into a saute pan. Doesn't take very long at all. And all of these recipes serve two people. Um, that's just because there's two people in my household that <laughs> when I'm making these, I always think, oh, you know, this is what I wanna do. And then again, the broccoli I have, I'm just gonna loosely chop that and add that in. And in here, I put that you could use, um, you know, edamame or tempeh or tofu, but you really could use any bean as well. So today I actually have some beans that I had left over. So I'm gonna add that as my protein source. And I always try to fit like, oh, is there, um, is there a starch in this food? So I have some brown rice that I have cooked. I already have, I already have it prepared, or you can take it out of your refrigerator, cook, cook a grain, a whole grain in, in um, a large quantity, and then you can kind of serve yourself or add it to a dish. So I have brown rice that I'm gonna use. Um, I just change up. There are a ton of different whole grain varieties when you go to the grocery store. Um, there's farro, millet, shogram, um, you know, oak groats. If you've never heard of oak groats, they're kind of similar to brown rice, um, quinoa. So there's, there's a ton to, to try teff, especially if you go to, if you're um, from Pittsburgh and you have a giant eagle, they have um, Rob's, Bob's Red Mill has a whole section of like international grains. So that's always also fun to kind of go and see like, oh, I've never tried teff before. Oh, it's from Africa, you know, and then you try it and cook it. So these are things that keep plant-based really fun and interesting. And I like it because then I find things I've never been exposed to before. I never ate bok, baby bok choy as much as I have now. And I just, it's like my favorite vegetable. So um, it's a lot of fun. And if you you know, aren't sure how to cook something too, especially if you go to the East End Food Co-op and you shop in their bulk section. If you do a search Google, um, how do I cook up this grain? There are so many, you know, resources now with the internet. Um, so, so I had a question about, um, Gina asked, how long did my husband take to go plant-based? And um, he decided to go plant-based six months after I did. Uh, I just kind of cooked, our meals and uh, I'm my, I was mainly the cook in our home. So I just kind of switched everything over. Like this is the groceries we buy now. He ate uh, cheese pizza was like his hardest thing to give up. So when we would, you know, he would want pizza, he would, he would grab that. I think the big thing for him was seeing how much better he felt eating plant-based, like his digestion got better. Um, he became very regular. Um, he started to notice his allergies got better where he was always, this is, the, and now your allergies, everyone's different. So like not all results are the same, but he had awful allergies, seasonal al allergies where he would be on um, lots of like uh, medication for it and they like went away. So, you know, that was a big incentive for him to keep up with it. And I think just as I got more comfortable with cooking meals and making like, you know, switching out meals, like we still have taco night and we still have different ways. I make pizza now from scratch and different things like that. I think, um, I think he got more comfortable too with it. And then it's kind of a progression. So um, six months after me, but you know, that's one of the reasons why I love my channel because I am trying to make foods that, you know, that's the big thing. I always, in the Facebook group, we always do tests like, Will your kids eat this? Okay. Um, will your husbands eat this and enjoy it? And anytime someone tells me like, you know, that they've done it this way and they've tried a recipe and their whole family enjoyed it, plant-based or not, that's kind of my end goal with my recipes. Um, all right. So I see another question um, from Cheryl said that she's diabetic. How do I adjust to eating carbs? Um, for diabetics, uh, it's always good to like consult with your doctor. The big thing about when you go plant-based if you're a diabetic is usually your numbers will change pretty rapidly where you need to be monitored to like lower your insulin by a, by a physician. That's the big thing. So you need to talk to your doctor about like, you know, being plant-based and doing it safely. Um, for carbs, uh, the whole thing behind it is that you're eating 
the whole food. You know, when people think about like a baked potato and their diabetes, it's the, it's like more of what you're putting onto the baked potato. It's the cheese, it's sour cream, it's the butter, it's the oil that you put on it. It's not so much the potato that you're just eating a plain baked potato. Um, so there are, uh, there's a book by Dr. Neil Bernard who wrote a whole book about diabetes and being plant-based. And so I would recommend you look up Neil Bernard diabetes and it'll come up um, and then, you know, work with your doctor too. They're like, hey, I'm interested in being plant-based. Um, I'm interested in eating a more, you know, whole food diet and you want to eat the whole grain. So that's really important when you go to do this. Um, other things too that can help is that um, eating like, for example, oats. When we think about oats, you know, when you think about oatmeal, you don't want to eat so much, if you're diabetic, instant oatmeal, okay? You want to go for more like still cut oatmeal because that's more in its whole form. If you want to go even further, there are things that you can get on Amazon or in the East End Food Co-op called oat groats. That's actually the wholest form of oats. And you can cook it just like porridge or still cut. Um, and then that would be even better for your blood, your blood, uh, blood sugar levels. So eating foods in the wholest form possible with all of that fiber really is going to help your numbers out. But again, I always tell people with diabetes, especially you need to consult with your doctor because um, some people see too good of results too quickly. You're welcome. Um, Store-bought veggie burgers, I stay away from. There is an ingredient in most of them called soy protein isolates. Those are no good, okay? Those are things that are going to cause inflammation. They are especially bad for, you know, you don't want to eat them, especially if you have cancer. Um, isolated proteins in general are kind of a no-no. So I, if I have a I have a recipe on our channel called our any bean burger, and we actually made it like a rodeo burger. If any of you guys are familiar with Burger King, um, it was my husband's favorite burger at Burger King with an onion ring on top and barbecue sauce. So I actually make my own bean, bean burgers. They're really easy. They freeze really great. We make our own um, onion rings, and then I make a barbecue sauce, and I put it all on a whole wheat bun, and um, there's like really awesome ways of getting that, and you can find lots of recipes for homemade veggie burgers. Um, every once in a while for convenience factor, sure. But on a day-to-day, -day, what I'm eating, it's not packaged or in the grocery store. Okay, I think I caught up to everyone in the chat. Sorry, I just caught that now. Um, so again, I'm just adding in, and I like to add in, you know, the more fiber, the more full you're gonna get, especially if you're trying to lose weight, that's really great too. Um, bulk up your food like that and get variety. Um, I eat, you know, lots of fruit too. I make sure I get in, um, you know, three to four servings of fruit a day. That's really easy to do, especially if you have oatmeal. I just add fruit to my oatmeal in the morning um, or have it as a snack. And then, you know, an average day of eating for me is, um, you know, it's, it's similar to, to anyone else. You can, I just swap out, when you think about meat or you think about um, something like that, I just swap it out with a, with a plant-based protein, like a bean source or something like that as well. Um, but, so Wendy, the only reason I would tell you to avoid certain things like that would be if you have an allergy. Um, really, there is no reason to avoid um, to avoid foods like that unless you're allergic or he's working with somebody that thinks he has an allergy to it. Um, peppers and all those things are great for you. The only thing I would say about olive oil is technically on a whole food plant-based diet, we actually eat zero oil. And um, that's because when you think about it, um, think about how many olives it takes to make olive oil. Okay, how many olives do you have to squeeze and press down to make olive oil? So actually using like oils and different things like that actually can raise your inflammation in your body. It's isolated fat. You're not getting any fiber. Eating olives is great, but kind of doing olive oil, we, we try to avoid. Um, so there's different ways. I'm gonna show you guys how to water saute or you can saute with vegetable broth. Um, but if you read any of the books or watch Forks Over Knives, they specifically talk about you know, reducing your inflammation and one of those things is oil. And I think a lot of people get surprised by that because um, it's like, well, what do I do without it now? But really once, I think that's the easiest thing to kind of swap out of, of your diet. 
is the oil. And my goal is to have as little inflammation as possible um, that, I, I, that I can have. So think about it, if it doesn't have fiber in it, you know, that's not really the whole form. All right, so I have my peppers and for, you know, you can ribbon, you can chop, it really is your choice, whatever you have time for. I probably won't do all of these, but I'll put a little bit of them in. I'm gonna cut these in half, these are kind of long ribbons. You can buy shredded carrots too. Uh, but yeah, Tom Brady did do a plant-based diet for a while. I don't know if he still is doing that or not, but I would assume he has a whole team of people telling him <laughs> what exactly to do. All right. And sometimes when you're an athlete, it can be um, the amount of calories that you need to can be a little bit hard because you're like always, especially at his level, um, the amount of food that you probably have to eat to stay up with that, I would assume would be a little bit difficult for the average person, you know. All right, so I have my carrots. I can add more if I want. I also have some spinach. And I also sometimes will order from um, a company called Misfit Market, which is a subscription, like local. They kind of give you um, like produce that is organic, but it's like maybe not the most beautifully shaped. Usually it comes like, in, I don't know if you guys have heard of um, imperfect produce. It's usually the ones that are like a little bit funny looking. They're totally fine and edible, but for some reason they get put on the side. And so they're a little bit cheaper. So Pittsburgh actually has Mis Misfit Market which you can go online and there's like coupon codes and stuff. And they'll ship you like a variety of um, variety of organic produce. So I actually got my box right before we got on tonight. So I have some spinach for, from it, but I was like, oh, it's perfect timing. And it's been really nice, especially during the pandemic, like that it just gets dropped off at my door. All right, so I have some spinach. You can put kale or arugula or whatever green that you like, it doesn't matter. Um, and it's, so I personally like organic if you can afford it, but it's not, it's not um, a deal breaker. It's more important that you're eating those vegetables than not eating them. So it, if it's, if you're gonna buy organic because you can afford it, fantastic. Okay, that's like gold, gold star. But if you are not able to afford it and you're not gonna eat something because um, you can't afford it and you can't buy organic, like it's better to actually eat it. The health benefits are going to be in there to actually to, to eat it. Um, Harriet, I just washed these before, but I just leave the skins on, you know, I'm just, just ribboning the carrots. Uh, let's see, I got a question about acceptable substitute for oil and shortening sugar or white flour. We can talk about sugar for sure. Um, substitute for oil, whenever I saute, I saute with water. You can water saute and everything steams up. You can water, you can cook with um, vegetable broth. Hold on guys, my dogs are, you guys are in Pittsburgh, you know how cold it is right now. <laughs> I'm surprised they didn't come in sooner. Um, you can saute with vegetable broth. That's also really easy so if your pans don't stick. Um, so I'm just gonna steam up and this will also like reduce in size so it won't be like as aggressively <laughs> a pile of vegetables um before we do that though we are going to make the sauce and the sauce has my sweetener of choice um so for a plant-based lifestyle or if you're trying to eat as whole as possible the sugar source that i only cook with or make is dates and um, dates are just, you know, they're fruit. I, you can find them at the grocery store, even in Pittsburgh. Um, they're a beautiful source of sugar and sweetened things. I just remove the pits. It's really important to make sure you do that. And I'm gonna use it in our teriyaki sauce tonight. You can also find date sugar, which is dehydrated dates into a powdered form. Um, so dates are my number one kind of go-to. If you can't afford um, dates, they sometimes can be a little pricey. Um, you also can use raisins and you can also make paste and different things. So anytime I bake, I make like a date paste. So I'm just mixing up dates and water and it makes a thick paste. Um, you can do that with raisins too, which is good. And if you, um, Gina, if you Google on our channel, the Drudy family date paste, it'll come right up. But it's actually really easy. It's one to one. So one cup of water to one cup of dates 
or half a cup of dates to half a cup of water. So it's really easy to remember. And it's the same when you do it with uh, raisins. So I'm gonna put two pitted dates in our blender. In the recipe I give you, I actually use date paste, but if you don't have, you know, if you didn't make date paste, you can just throw two dates in there and it's gonna end up be the same when we blend it. Um, I also have a little bit of um, coconut aminos. Now you can use low sodium soy sauce. That is a little bit, now we're getting into the things that are a little bit processed, right? You know, soy sauce or something like that. I like coconut aminos, garlic sauce. Um, it's really uh, a lower sodium soy sauce. It doesn't, it actually doesn't have any, it's not a soy sauce, but an alternative. And um, the main ingredients are coconut tree sap, garlic, ginger, and cayenne pepper. Um, but you can use, you know, tamari or, or whatever you want to use for that. And generally, I only use this for like when I make a teriyaki sauce. Um, it just really helps to give it that like umami flavor that I think a lot of us are used to. And I find this at our, um, actually our giant eagle started to carry it now in the Asian section. So I can hold it up close to show you guys, but, um, and it lasts a really long time. Cause you're only using a little bit at a, at a go. And I was very pleased to see that it was at our, that it was at our uh, giant eagle last time I was there. It's also at Whole Foods, but that's a little bit more of a special trip for me. Um, rice vinegar, I'm also gonna add a little bit of that in just to help. Again, you're kind of playing around with the salty, sweet, um, different flavor palettes. And then I have some garlic powder and ginger powder and you can add as much or as little as you want. You can use fresh garlic. Oh, you can use fresh uh, garlic if you have it. A little bit of ginger. And then we want to thicken this and make this a really delicious like thick um, teriyaki sauce for our bowls. So I'm gonna use some air root flour. Um, you also can use cornstarch and this is really just to help everything thicken up for it. And we're gonna heat this on the stove top and let it all come together once we blend it. Um, you can find dates at Giant Eagle too. It's just in the, it's usually in the nuts and seeds section. Um, but usually there's packaged dates actually around the holidays. My favorite dates are at Giant Eagle. They take um, pitted dates and they roll them in pumpkin pie spice. And sometimes they do walnuts or something like that. And they're just like, they taste like little pumpkin pie bites. They're actually, I actually have to like put them in the freezer because they're, <laughs> they're like candy to me. Um, they're really good. But they're just, they're just in the um, spice section. So I'm gonna blend this. I'm gonna put myself on mute so you guys don't hear me. So I'm not um, bothering you guys for a second while I blend this smooth. All right, it didn't take very much time at all. It comes out like a nice liquidy. Um, yes, you can also use figs would work great too. You can find figs. Figs are a great source of calcium. Um, so yeah, definitely could use figs. I like dates uh, generally because it has a pretty like neutral flavor. It can go with a lot of things. I haven't found anything that like it just doesn't work with. Um, so I'm gonna turn you guys, we're gonna move over to my stove top. And then for this part, you wanna get a whisk because we're gonna whisk constantly until it thickens up and becomes a sauce. Um, but let me move you guys. We're gonna rotate. I have a very small kitchen, but it does the job. All right, so you're gonna take your mixture. There you have it all blended. And I'm just gonna pour it in to my saucepan. You can also, you know, add lemon juice if you want to add a little bit of brightening it. Play around with the sauce recipe. It's it's your own. You can add um, red pepper flakes if you like spicy. And then you're just going to let everything um, 
kind of heat it on medium high heat and you're gonna let everything bubble. And then at that point, you can whisk it. It's gonna become nice and thick and then you wanna turn off your heat. Um, the only thing is, is that you can't walk away when you do this part because it'll burn the bottom of your pan if you don't remove it quick enough. So I just kind of stand here for, it only takes like a minute or two. Um, so as soon as it starts to bubble, I'll start whisking, make sure nothing sticks to the bottom and then I'll remove it and it's done. And then I also have our whole, um, our whole grain here. I just have some brown rice that I made earlier that we're gonna make our dishes with. And then we'll water saute and add our beans and that's done. It's gonna be my dinner tonight. <laughs> Does anyone have any other questions while we um, work at this part? It can be about anything plant-based that I can help. Um, Plant-Based Pittsburgh is our, um, our group. It's, we do monthly meetings. Uh, again, anyone interested in plant-based uh, nutrition or anything about being plant-based, we have um, doctors from the area. I think tonight at seven o'clock, there's a meeting um, and they're having a UPMC doctor come and talk about plant-based as well. So that's really cool. So, okay, my sauce is starting just to film a little bit. So I'm just gonna sit here and whisk until it becomes thick enough, I wanna stop. Um, Gina, I do have some cookie recipes. Um, so if you go to our channel, we have, again, I'm, I'm trying to make your plant-based journey as fun as possible um, and eating healthy as fun as possible. So we have chocolate cookies, we have oatmeal cookies, we have a banana bread cookie. Um, we have uh, Reese's. Yeah, like I make little Reese eggs and you would think that you're eating a Reese's, which is really fun. And so I, again, I try to take a really, I think a unique interest on um, coming to a plant-based lifestyle that you can still have everything you like. You're not really giving up, you know, like you're getting more than you're giving up. Um, and so I try to make it so that it's not like, you know, you're not eating salad constantly and that's all you can have. <laughs> all right, this is starting to get thick. Awesome job. All right, so as soon as it starts to kind of thicken up, you can remove it, definitely. That's that cornstarch or if you use tapioca starch or if you use air root starch, it just kind of activates when you hit it. Um, Wendy asked about other foods you should avoid for inflammation. Um, do potatoes cause inflammation? Potatoes do not cause inflammation as long as you're not allergic to it. Um, potatoes are a whole food. Um, sweet potatoes are great. There's varieties of other potatoes. If you go to Giant Eagle and you can find the purple potatoes, sometimes they're, they're even the best for you because they're that vibrant color. They actually have the most antioxidants there. Um, there's purple sweet potatoes at the food co-op. If you get a chance to check that out, that would be even better. Uh, so all the foods, I wouldn't say one food is, like more foods have different antioxidants and can um, have more bang for your buck sort of say, but, um, but as long as you're eating it in whole food form, you know, that's the way to go. So we have potatoes, we make, um, I bake French fries, I cut, you know, I just don't, you know, cover them with oil or anything like that. And they get crispy and cook up. We have an air fryer um, that works great. And so you can still have foods like that. We actually make um, chili fries where I cut up French, fr like I make my own French fries, I cut them up and then I make a chili and put that on top. And we have a, um, we have a couple different like cheese replacement recipes. We have a nacho cheese sauce that I make. That's really awesome and has, um, there's cashews in there and red bell, roasted red bell pepper. And uh, I know like saying this, it sounds, I, I talk about it like, um, like, oh my gosh, you guys have to try it. But like, once you try it, it's really, that's where it, you know, uh, I've been doing this for a long time. So um, you, you, won't, you won't believe me until you try it. You should, if you guys want to try it, it's called Nacho Cheese on our, on our website. And it's literally like my favorite thing that, um, that we have on everything. <laughs> All right, so I just removed that from the heat. I have all of our vegetables that I cut out. I'm gonna water saute this tonight. So I'm turning my pan on. I just grab a little glass of water. I'll grab a little glass of water. And again, you're just steaming everything through. So it's not, you know, you can get a nonstick pan, but most of them are nonstick now, nowadays. Um, and so I just add a little bit of water 
And anytime it sticks, you can add a little bit of water or vegetable broth if you want to do that. That works. But again, you're just you're just sauteing everything through. Um, Darla asked about my Vitamix. Um, so if you don't have a Vitamix, um, you can soak your dates in hot water and that'll help soften them and then it'll help your blender out. Um, same with if you do anything with like nuts or seeds, if you soak them in hot water for even like half an hour to an hour, the longer the easier it'll be. Um, that makes it a little bit easier for it to blend. Um, so there is a couple different blenders that are really good besides the Vitamix. Uh, I think it's uh, on Amazon, it's C-O-R-I Blender. It's like around, I think it's around $90, but it's got really good reviews just as much as the Vitamix uh, has. And I kind of, I lucked into the Vitamix. I won a contest around the time I got married and I, before I was plant-based and um, online. And so I got the, I got the uh, Vitamix for free. But now that I've used it for several years, I said like, well, if I ever get out of one, I'm gonna have to buy another one. Um, Gina asked about the milk substitute do I use? Do I make almond milk? Um, so sometimes I will make it, but sometimes I'll just buy it for convenience sake. There are a couple of different brands that you can purchase it that have less ingredients than other brands. And there are more and more now. I feel like even from five years ago when I started, um, it's just like, you know, plant-based is not very trendy, but it's very popular where, you know, now there's like whole sections in the grocery store. When I started, there wasn't really much of that. Um, so always read the ingredients and that's really with anything, even vegetable broth when you buy it, if, you, if you're not making it your own. Um, so, you know, ones with less ingredients are great. There are brands like Elmer's um, makes all different kinds of, they make oat milk and cashew milk and hazelnut milk and um, almond milk. And so those are really like two ingredients where it's just like water and the ingredient. Um, and a couple, you know, there's a couple other ones that are good. So um, Eden's soy makes one that's just soybeans and water. And so you can get stuff that's, that's a little bit easier um, than having to make everything from scratch. Um, what about my diet? Do the doctors credit to lowering my inflammation? I think it was, um, you know, eating more vegetables, a variety of color, like we're doing tonight for dinner, that definitely helps, you know, give your body what it needs. Um, and probably getting away from dairy, dairy is super in inflammatory. So um, I think doing those things, you know, I'm not eating, putting cheese on everything. Um, I'm not using butter, um, you know, even the milk we're using. So I think all of it really helps lower the inflammation and uh, really. I noticed it, um, I didn't have any specific symptoms besides chest pain um, and like being out of breath per se, that that kind of went away pretty quickly. Uh, but when I went to go get my blood work taken six months from that point, uh, my CRP cut in half and went from 16 to eight. So that kind of made me, you know, that was like, oh, this is like working. It's like going down, it was so high. Um, so. I just kind of stuck with it and it just lowered and lowered and lowered until it's normal. Um, Gina asked about eating gluten. Yep, I, I eat, well, I eat gluten. Um, I don't eat gluten. I eat gluten on that I'm not avoiding it. I don't eat bread all the time just because I'm not a huge bread person, but I'm not avoiding it because gluten is like bad for me per se. Um, I definitely eat like, uh, like different whole grains that have wheat in them, like like wheat berries, um, farro has wheat in it. So I'm, I'm not personally gluten-free. If you have a gluten intolerance or something like that, definitely would want to avoid, but um, I'm, I'm fine, with, uh, fine with wheat. Uh, Renee asked, can you use ghee instead of butter? Ghee is more of a clarified butter, more concentrated, so I would avoid that. I don't use anything like that. <laughs> Uh, do you prepare crackers or chips? Um, yes, so the way I prepare crackers is that you could take some um, corn tortillas or, or, or even like um, pita bread and you can cut them into triangles and cook bake them and they'll get nice and crispy just like chips that used to have. So we'll make our own pita chips. I'll make my own corn tortilla chips. And Trader Joe's actually has like a three ingredient 
corn tortilla that you can get that's just like corn, water, and lime. So we'll make those. And, and one of those packets for like $2 gets you like a ton of chips. Um, you also can make like homemade pretzels and different snacky stuff like that. I also have a recipe for homemade crackers where you're just blending up the whole grain and water and it makes kind of like a paste and then you can spread it out and it makes crackers and you can put your seasonings on top of it. We have like an everything but, a, but the bagel seasoning we do. Um, so that's a really, a really easy way to go about it. Um, hummus, you can definitely find some hummuses that are cleaner than others. You just have to read the ingredients. Um, although hummus is one of the things that's like super easy to make and you can make it in bulk and you can freeze it and do a lot. So if you just have a food processor, um, that works great to whip together. And we make hummus of you know chickpeas and you can do, we do like a white bean hummus as well. So you can kind of play around with the different ones for that. And hummus actually is a great, I mean, I, I married somebody who's um, half Syrian. So like hummus is like almost like its own food group here. So we eat a lot of hummus. Um, but I have a hummus recipe on our channel as well. Uh, chickpea pasta and vegetable pasta. I think that that's, um, I think that that's okay as long as, you know, you're, you know, if you want a variety of, uh, I get most of those times, it's just like chickpea flour and water for the pastas. Um, you know, every once in a while, we will grab something like that. But, uh, you know, generally we're just grabbing whole wheat. I generally will look at how much fiber is in it. And whichever one is like the most fiber with the least amount of ingredients is my winner. So we eat, you know, there's a lot of different varieties of pastas you can get, but always check out how much fiber is in it. You can kind of tell if it's more processed or not with, with, with that. It's kind of my indicator. All right, so this is steaming up. I'm just gonna get this a toss to let the stuff on top get in there. And then your, your vegetables should get like a bright green color, especially that broccoli, it should be a really, a vibrant color when you go to, to cook it, but I'm just kind of softening everything a little bit. You could also eat this raw, you know, like all these vegetables are fine to eat raw. Um, nice cream, Gina talked about. So there's, um, so like all of my ice cream lovers out there, um, there is a way to enjoy a uh, homemade, homemade same dessert, similar, same kind of uh, texture and everything called nice cream. It's really easy. In our blender, I just mix up some frozen bananas and a little bit of the plant milk and you can mix it and it makes a soft serve. Uh, if it ends up being too watery, you can always pop it in the, in the freezer and then even scoop it out. And we do like all different varieties. Um, we make strawberry nice cream, chocolate nice cream, um, pistachio, you can make a date fudge. Like it, it's kind of like never ending. You can make a mint chocolate chip one. There's there's so many different varieties. And so that's really awesome just to kind of like really quick in a pinch make, and then you have it. Um, and then we actually have like little storage freezer, little ice cream pints that I just will make a bunch and freeze. And then I'm when I want it, it's in there. And Gina said pumpkin and peanut butter are her favorites. So like literally it's endless. That like I said, the most the biggest thing about my channel is that I try to make foods that like we all love. I actually have a Twix Blizzard nice cream recipe that is like a, it's like a, a cookie crumble that you make and then there's a date caramel and you put it all together and it's all healthy for you. And, and it's a treat that you like really, really could get onto. And it's not really like, you're not thinking about like, oh, I'm just eating bananas. Um, it's really good. All right. So we're going to move back over and we're going to kind of put it all together because I know I'm, I'm going a little bit past my time. Um, but I, I, I didn't know if this was going to take that long, but I had such a good time talking to you guys tonight and, uh, it went by so quick. So I'm just going to grab a large bowl and I'm just going to put in those vegetables that we sauteed. And again, it cooked down a little amount and see all those broccoli and everything is like really a vibrant green color. Um, you know, it should really stand out. And you can, um, you know, mix in your other things that you're prepared. I make whole grains and keep them in the fridge. So I just like pull out what I need. That way, you know, the, the biggest part of this, you know, and if I wasn't showing it on camera, really would be like chopping the vegetables. You could also make the teriyaki sauce ahead of time. Um, so that could be ready to go and you could just heat that up. 
I'm going to add in some brown rice that you could toss. You can add in any whole grain that you like. Like just insert whichever whole grain of choice. If you wanted to do this with noodles, soba noodles are really great. They have a lot of fiber. Um, you could do this, with, that's like a buckwheat noodle. Uh, you can make this with like a homemade kind of ramen, lots of different kind of ways to play it up. All right, and then I also have some beans that I had cooked up. So I have some beans for protein. Because that's the biggest thing when anyone goes plant-based, that's like what you get asked the most is like, where do you get your protein? Um, and so I really like Dr. Greger from nutritionfacts.org. He always tells people like, well, then you haven't heard of beans. And it's true, beans have a ton of protein. So I'm gonna put my beans in there. And then you can put, um, put the teriyaki sauce, like drizzle that on and it does get nice and, I don't know if you guys can see that, but it gets like super thick. And I usually will just set this aside and let whoever in our household add as much as they want. But let me just show you guys. There's like a nice thick sauce to put on top. And then I also will take some sesame seeds and just sprinkle those on kind of for looks, but it's really fun. So I kind of, another thing too, is that, you know, making it plant-based, especially for your family, it's all about making it fun and interesting and exciting. You know, we'll set up a little, um, a little breakfast bar and we'll like all make add all of our little toppings that we want. And so it's a really, it's really fun to kind of, let everyone pick and pick what vegetables they want, especially if you have kids trying to do this. Um, you know, then they feel like, kind of like even a taco bar you could do, similar to all these bowls. Um, how much time do I spend on cooking? I'm the wrong person to ask about that because I absolutely love it. So if I could just spend, if I could put my bed right outside my kitchen and just like get up and be in here all day, I totally would, I'd move into my kitchen. Um, so I'm not the right person to ask about that, but. You can make plant-based very accessible where you're not in the kitchen all day. Again, all of these recipes I'm sending you tonight, you know, if I wasn't here like talking away at you guys, it wouldn't take very long at all. And you could have a lot of stuff prepped and easy to, to access. It would take you no more than it takes you how to cook whatever you're making now. Um, it's really easy. Uh, daily dozen. The daily dozen is um, is from Dr. Greger. So one of the doctors uh, from Forks Over Knives. And once I, I kind of I kind of talk about like going down the rabbit hole. Once you start learning about being plant based and all the amazing health benefits, um, I read the China study by T. Colin Campbell because cancer was a big concern um, in my you know my life. I read uh, how to prevent and reverse heart disease, and I also read a book called How Not to Die. And How Not to Die is by a doctor called Dr. Greger. Um, he wrote a book about the 12 top killers of, you know, of the United States or, or of the world, really. And it talks about cancer and heart disease and, um, you know, all the, all of the other ones that you can get. And, and he talks about 12 items that you can include in your diet every day to help you, you know, prevent and, you know, hopefully lower your chances of not getting those lifestyle diseases. So it's called The Daily Dozen. Um, I would suggest everyone like rate, rate, I can put it in the email that I send out to Wendy, but it is, um, it's called the Daily Dozen by Dr. Greger. He actually has a free, a free app that you can get that's like a checklist of all the things to eat every day, like how many beans to eat a day, how many vegetables to get in, how many fruits. And so I actually used his Daily Dozen when I lost a lot of my weight. And when I started being plant-based, I felt like it was a, such a well-rounded um, way to be plant-based. I entered all, I entered my food online just because I was like a little nervous about am I getting enough calcium? Am I getting enough iron? Am I getting enough of what I need? And I entered my food into a free page called Chronometer, which kind of tells you if you're hitting all of your nutrition, you know, for your height and weight. And every time I did his daily dozen, I was hitting that, I was hitting everything. I was getting way more than I even needed um, for everything you know, everything but, but the B12 that you take a supplement for. Um, so it was really awesome. So he has a free app called The Daily Dozen. He has a whole book called How Not to Die. It has chapters on, like I said, the 12 biggest um, causes of death. And he has, you know, the 12 things that you should be incorporating every day. So I, that's kind of, that's a big, 
I'm glad you mentioned that, Gina. That's a really big um, person that I look up to. And then his website called nutritionfacts.org um, goes through all the medical research and does unbiased you know, studies and kind of sees, um, he does them on videos on all different topics that he'll go through and, and really see what the science says about different, different items of being plant-based. Uh, Wendy asked, can you use organic canned beans? Yep, canned beans are great. I just will rinse them before I use them if you don't want to make them from scratch. That's definitely a convenience food that I, that I enjoy. <laughs> All right, well, that's actually the end of the meeting. So um, for, my, for my part, but I hope you guys will make this. I will send you guys, um, like I said, there'll, there'll be a couple other recipes we didn't go over tonight. If at any time that you guys have any questions, um, my, I'll put my email and make sure Wendy has it as well, as, long as, as well as my YouTube channel and our Facebook group. Um, I'm here to help. I was, you know, I was starting out not knowing anything about plant-based and um, really have like learned so much and, and love this food so much that, you know, if you need help with anything, reach out and I'm here to kind of support you guys and, and, I always tell people, even if you change one meal a day that you're eating to kind of swap out the, the animal protein for something maybe a little bit healthier, if you pick like Monday's your day to be plant-based, you know, that's still making a positive impact in your health. Um, the more you put of this food and the less of the other, even if you don't go 100%, you're still doing something, you know, really good for your body. So I always tell people like, even if you're not gonna jump 100% in, even a little change can make a big, big difference. Gosh, thanks, Brittany. This has been absolutely phenomenal. You have, you're definitely up there in the height of, of, of great um, presenters. This is just so much great information, practical. I love how you went over everything. And, um, you know, I, I just can't thank you enough. I hopefully you'll come back and, and do more recipes for us because I'd love to, you know, have you, you know, come back and share, continue to share and certainly Definitely. share all your information to you guys. Look how yummy that looks. I wish, I wish you could share that with us right now. That looks good. I, I don't have to go down and make, make dinner tonight. So <laughs> um, does anybody else have any other questions before we, um, you know, we sign off for, um, you know, for Brittany, any other things? in the chat or um, feel free to unmute if you want to. Okay. Hey, what was that cover that you use that you're just folding up right now? Oh, this was, I had my beans covered. Yeah, I, yeah, uh, well, what is the cover? What, what, that's not oh, saran wrap. It's press and seal. Press and seal, okay. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you. Sounds good, anybody else? All right, everyone. Um, once again, thank you so much. And I can't wait to tune into your all your social media and find follow you. I'm definitely going to be doing that for sure uh, for inspiration. And um, thank you to everyone for joining us this evening. And um, look forward to seeing you next Wednesday for our oncology dermatologist. And, um, and then, um, you know, everybody stay warm and get out and do some movement for that happy feet program for those of you that are participating in Jen's happy feet. All right, thanks again. Have a good evening, everyone. Thanks, yeah. Britt.